Hey Divers, Ali Pierce, Vintage Scuba. I have something today that I think you're going to find very, very interesting. I certainly hope so. Certainly if you're a vintage diver. If you're a double hose diver, maybe even more so. Okay, let me give you a bit of background first of all. I have here a book. Nice book. Hardcover book. You know, fairly thick. And uh, the list of the contributors is unbelievable. This is a list of, this, these are pictures and a list of probably, probably the most influential men on the history of scuba diving, on the sport of scuba diving, uh, uh, that ever existed. These ex-Navy people, scientists, doctors, and so on, all scuba divers who contributed to the development of the sport we know today. But this book is kind of interesting. This is called The Science of Skin and Scuba Diving. This is one of the very first fully comprehensive books. There were other books written incidentally to, to tell people about the sport of scuba diving and they had some equipment information in there and some, you know, you know, don't don't play with the sharks and do this and do that. And they, I'm not saying they weren't good, but they weren't comprehensive. Look at this book. This is a great book. In fact, this book is one of the most popular books for vintage collectors because it also happens to have all of the most common regulators of that time frame. Uh, 57 this was printed uh, so the late 50s to the mid 60s all the regulators are in here with parts breakdowns yeah so if you have an old regulator and you're looking for the parts breakdown this is what you need to get the science of skin and scuba diving now just to relate this to newer divers if you were trained by Nawi uh, or one of the other uh, organizations YMCA and so on then you probably in all likelihood used this book this is, I was trained with this book at the YMCA in Peterborough, Ontario, 1960. And this book is called The New Science of Skin and Scuba Diving. Now, it's kind of interesting because this book, the hardcover version, is quite rare and not inexpensive. This book is quite common. It's a soft cover. Textbook about scuba diving. has lots of neat stuff in there for sure, but it's quite common. It was used for many, many, many years by a number of different certifying agencies to train scuba divers, the new science of skin and scuba diving. But it was kind of funny because I've spoken to many, many divers over the years who have used this book. Oh, yes, I have that book called The New Science of Skin and Scuba Quite enjoyed it. And it was a great book and called The New Science of Skin and Scuba Diving. And I would say to them, do you know why it's called The New Science of Skin and Scuba Diving? Of course, the answer, the logical answer is, well, because skin and scuba diving is a new sport and all the information in there is quite novel quite unique quite new to the community so they call it the new science of skin and scuba diving and I would say no you're wrong it's not called the new science of skin and scuba diving because it's a new science it's called the new science of skin and scuba diving because it's based on this book the science of skin and scuba diving same authors same contributors the science of skin and scuba diving from the 50s. And then later, the new science of skin and scuba diving. You understand? This is a new version of that famous old book. This was used for many, many, many years, many different covers. They went from the old black and white line diagram that I used to this cover for many years, and then in the color photographs and so on. So the new science of skin and scuba diving, based on the science of skin and scuba diving, is a very popular textbook. What's the big deal? Well, let me show you the big deal. I want to go to a spot in the science of skin and scuba diving from the 50s. And I want to show you one of the skills that we had to do, we had to learn as scuba divers. Now this is involved at that time with pretty much, invariably in fact, the two hose regulators, double hose vintage regulators. Yes, they had a couple of single hose regulators in this book, they mentioned them. Uh, but almost invariably, most of the skills those days were to do with the two hose regulators, okay? And so you can see on these two pages, and I'm going to get Kevin to take, give you a close-up of these two pages. You can see in these two pages that there is two full pages with accompanying pictures showing divers how to clear the hoses on their two hose regulator. Yes, it was quite an involved affair. You had to, as this page shows, roll in just exactly the right direction with careful timing roll your whole body completely around horizontally and this particular page it gives you a different technique on this page it shows you how to do the same thing but in this case by holding the regular mouthpiece up above your head a little tilt to your right shoulder then pulling it down quickly and starting to it was a complicated not complicated but it was in fact a, a, a skill that you had to practice and develop in order to be able to clear 
the regulator from water if it came out of your mouth. Now, you know today, with a single hose regulator, if the second stage comes out of your mouth, big deal, you put it back in, little puff of air, it's clear, and off you go. Not so in the early days. It was quite a complicated affair. I'm going to get Kevin maybe to put those pictures in there. So why, why was it so complicated back then? Well, uh, the, the reason it was complicated is because back then you were using regulators like this. You're going to say, okay, so it's a two-hose regulator, big deal. Well, not quite. This is an old regulator from the late 50s, but this has a very special hose on it. And you're going to say, ah, oh, it's a two-hose regulator. What's the big deal? Ah, let me show you something, folks. And even you guys that are big into two-hose regulators will enjoy seeing this. This is not a two-hose regulator. There's only one hose. This is a one-hose, two-hose regulator. <laughs> I just made that up. This is an original regulator, just called regulator. And it had a single hose, a non a, a one-piece, continuous, single hose, corrugated, corrugated, flat, with a mouthpiece molded in. A single hose came all the way around, from the intake right around to the exhaust. One hose. There was nothing in here. I'm going to take the mouthpiece. Can you see that, Kevin? I'm going to squeeze it. You see that? There's nothing in there. It's one hose runs all the way around. This is the way regulars were originally. What happened? Well, this regulator hose was very difficult to clear, as you can see from that old book, The Science of Skin and Scuba Diving. Because if you were scuba diving with this regulator, and you took the mouthpiece out of your mouth, or it came out of your mouth for whatever reason, the hose filled with water. Now take a look at this hose. That's an inch and a quarter hose, almost three feet long. I haven't done the math, but how much water does that hold? Yeah. A liter, liter and a half maybe. There's no way you swallow that. If you blow into this hose, the air that you blow goes through the exhaust and out through the exhaust. And it may actually clear some of the water out of that side. But this side is full of water too. And you haven't done anything. It can't go into the regulator. It's stopped by the valve. But you don't blow any of it out. So if you blow into this hose and then suck you got a half a liter of water in your lungs. Yeah. Hence the reason for the important information and the skill development of how to clear a two-hose regulator. They weren't called two-hose back then, just a regulator. And they had a single one-piece hose about all the way around. Now I'm going to add at this particular point that this may be the only time you ever see one of these. I mean with a one-piece hose. Very, very rare. This one's in perfect condition, and it also is a little bit unique in that it's blue. There weren't many blue. Most of them are black. Some are yellow. Most of them are black. And a few blue ones. I happen to have a near-perfect, like new, blue, rubber, one-piece hose from an early 50s regulator. As I say, it's a one-piece double hose. Anyway, that's the difficulty, and that's the reason why they spent so much time. It wasn't easy to get the water out of all of those hoses. You had to work at it. Okay? Now, if you take a look <clears throat> at the new science of skin and scuba diving, and you go to the same area in the book, they barely talk about it. They barely talk about it at all. They do say that if you take the regular mouthpiece out of your mouth and hold it above your head like this, the air will come out of it, and you can bring it down and pop it into your mouth, and it should be clear. And that's quite right. When you take the mouthpiece out of your mouth of any regulator and you hold it up like this, it will free flow. Air will come out of that regulator. The reason is very simple. Second stage is up here where the pressure is lower. First stage is down there where the pressure is higher. So that regulator will normally begin to free flow. And then you can pull it down and stick it in your mouth and you'll get air. What happened? This book was written in 65. So it was not that much farther after the, the, the first book, not this one, but the first new science was written in 65, less than 10 years later. What happened? Well, what happened is they solved this problem. What do you mean they solved it? The manufacturers? No. Manufacturers didn't solve it. There was a gentleman by the name of Rory Hope and his good friend Charlie Page. That's right. Rory Hope and Charlie Page. And there were two divers. Actually, it was interesting that 
Charlie Page was a, a fighter in the Second World War. He was shot down three times. Landed once in the English Channel and a couple of times landed in England and, and, and did really well and came back to the United States. Anyway, these two guys were divers and they were innovative divers and, and, and uh, they were diving and enjoying it and obviously facing the same problems all divers did of those days. By the way, I'm going to add right here that that information about Rory Hope and Charlie Page is not in any book. I could tell you more about them because I just spoke to Sam Miller who was an authority, a genuine legend of diving, started diving in the 40s and 50s. He actually knew these guys. He was a neighbor of Charlie Page, that's right, and he, uh, he was there when all this stuff developed. And I just spoke to him on the phone, a very, very dear friend of mine, and he gave me some background. I won't share it all with you, we don't have time for that. But anyway, these guys were saying, this is, this is, this is terrible, this is, I, I, this is awful. I keep getting a mouthful of salt water, I've got to keep rolling over, I've got to do something about it. So what did they do? Well, they sat down and they invented, are you ready for this? The Hope Page mouthpiece. Really original. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just chuckling. The Hope Page mouthpiece, and here is a Hope Page mouthpiece. Again, although these are not impossible to find, they're quite rare. Here's the Hope Page mouthpiece, and they sold it. You could go to Skin Diver magazine in the in the 50s and 60s, and go through the ads, and you would find a Hope Page mouthpiece. There it is. Can you get a picture of that? I'm going to rotate this around a little bit. And down here on the bottom, I don't know if you can zoom in there, Kevin. I hold this perfectly still. Can you see right down there? Hope page. And all it really is is a plastic tube with a screw-on fitting on the end and a spigot. Okay? And you could send them whatever it was, 10 bucks, and, and, and you would get one of these in the mail. And you would literally cut right there. You see the seam? You would cut right there and cut right there. Cut the mouthpiece off of your regulator and then put the spigot in one side with a clamp on it, plumber's clamp, put that in the other side with a clamp on it, and the problem was solved. How was it solved? Well, let's take this, open this up and see how it was solved. On this side, they had a valve. It's called a non-return valve. What that means is that you can go, air will go through this side, watch, And that, can you see that opening up there? But it won't go back. So water cannot go into the intake hose. And on this side over here, same type of valve. One-way valve facing the other way. So air cannot, water, sorry, cannot go into the intake hose. And if you exhale into this regulator mouthpiece, the, the air that you blow in goes down the exhaust hose clears it out, there's no water in the intake hose, so you can suck air. Just as it is today with modern regulators. You take your regulator of your mouth, you put it back in, there's water in the regulator, so what do you do? And off you go. Same thing. The Hope Page mouthpiece. It was so popular with divers that in just a matter of two or three years, every manufacturer of scuba regulators was making two hose regulators with built-in non-return valves. Aqualung called it the Easy Clear. That's E-Z, <laughs> two letters, Easy Clear mouthpiece. Other companies had different names for it, but it was all based on the Hope Page mouthpiece. Rory Hope and Charlie Page made the Hope Page mouthpiece to solve the problem of clearing the old one-piece hoses. A little bit of history for you. A couple of things that you may or may not find anywhere else. The whole page mouthpiece is not that common either. A little bit of history about the new science and the science of skin and scuba diving. If you've used one of these, now you know where it came from. I hope you enjoyed that. Some interesting information, and I have a lot more coming. So keep watching my channel. Keep your comments coming too. I really enjoy them. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Talk to you soon.